Okay, we are at the um, Eureka Mine over here. And you can see the railroad tracks or the you know, mining cart tracks, ore cart tracks leading down from the mine. And over here you can see Cashier Mill where the raw ore was processed into um, gold was extracted and a little um, storage area of sorts. You'd have to be like three or four feet tall to stand up in there. So it's got to be storage. Okay. And just to give you a, a rundown, let's see, before we do that, the main road continues up off in this direction, leading upward to Augerberry Point. We're headed there next. But let me just read this interpretive sign, give some additional information. Gold from the Eureka Mine sustained Pete Augerberry for 40 years. Historians estimate that Augerberry extracted about um, seventy-five, one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars worth of gold, then valued at twenty dollars per ounce, and he extracted this gold from Providence, Providence Ridge. So this up here must be Providence Ridge, with the cashier mill on the ridge and the mine, Eureka Mine, tunneling under it. Um, Cashier Mill on the hillside to your left is Cashier Mill, built in 1909, powered by gasoline engines. The mill pulverized the ore, then chemical processes um, using mercury and cyanide extracted the gold. The mill site and surrounding mines were originally part of Shorty Harris's claim, which he sold to the Cashier Mining Company. Augerberry later bought the mill site, adding to the seven Death Valley mining claims he already owned. Gold prospectors like Augerberry looked for veins of quartz, um, which are shown right here. There's a quartz vein. They looked for veins of quartz or Seams of red or yellow iron-stained rock. Miners followed the veins drilling and blasting to break the ore loose. Then they sent the ore to mills to extract the gold. A profitable mine would yield about an ounce of gold per ton of ore. In recent years, the Eureka Mine has become a winter home for the endangered Townsend big-eared bat. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe that's another reason you don't want to go in the mine. Your presence in the mine during winter months could awaken the bats, which may cause them distress and even death. And, you know, who knows what it'll do to you. So, yeah, don't go in there during the winter. Okay, so let's head up to Augerberry Point. One of the chances I found my altimeter watch, um, which had been hiding in my backpack. And here we are at Eureka Mine, and we're at about 5,000 feet. We're going to test, uh, check the altitude up at Augerberry Point, and then down at our starting point. Okay, Augerberry Point, off in this direction. Let's go. Where's gold to be found? I think I'm starting to get an idea. Look at, this is the hill that um, Pete Augerberry and Shorty Harris looked at this hill and said, hey, there's gold in here. We're gonna dig into it. And they dug all around it. There's mines all around that hill. And notice the outcroppings of rock. Okay, now we look over here and you don't see hills like that. 
everything's pretty smooth rolling hills all around us and you don't see a whole lot of mines in those rolling hills however if you look way up at the top here there's a little more rocky area maybe that would have gold um, up up near the top of that hill we don't know but um, if there's quartz in that rock maybe it would have gold and then up in this area there's another spot that's that's rocky right there and you can see rocky areas along the the top of a lot of these hills um, of course um, maybe the miners did not go up there because it's just too difficult to haul or up and down those areas or maybe they looked at that and said nope there's no gold there now, there's another um, candidate interesting so yeah yeah these guys were would just wander around the desert looking for hills like this and check the rocks out and dig a little and see if they could find gold in there and there's probably a lot of gold still in the area there are still some active mines in the death valley area um but being a national park you know you just can't go dig around looking for gold anyway that's that's um i just wanted to get a get a feel for what those original prospectors might have been watching for as they wandered around out here and i get the um the experience of wandering around because i'm not in a car and you'll notice on lasvegasareatrails.com there's a picture of um, shorty harris um, leading his mules and you can see um, shorty and his mule packed with all his mining equipment um, just um, tramping around out here in the open desert looking for just the right hill where he could find gold so and, and, and the hills the the scenery has not changed since shorty was in this area um, in the early 1900s okay onward if you're traveling up the augerberry the main augerberry point road which is this road here and you want to find eureka mine on the way there is a turnoff here it's unmarked and there's another turnoff a little further down but that's the hill you want to shoot for that's the hill where eureka mine and cashier mill are um so take that right and head up to the mine explore around um if you just want to see augerberry point just stay on this road perspective of the cashier mill and eureka mine area there you see them right on this hillside And then looking around, there's the road, um, Augerberry Point Road leading downward to Immigrant, Immigrant Canyon Road. And then you see the opposite side of Immigrant Canyon. And then here's the road immediately below us, skirting these hills, heading around a corner and on up to Augerberry Point, another three miles. Moving up Augerberry Point Road, and as I look at the hills around me, I was hoping that this would lead up to those hills that don't seem too far above. <laughs> but, guess what? The road's leading in this direction, which leads me to believe that I have yet to get to the top 
of this, which seems like a long way up, um, that then would be a good candidate for Augerberry Point. So I know that I'm at about 5,300. I need to get to 6,700. So 1,400 feet and we will be there. So here we go. Again on the route. And here's looking down. We are weaving through this canyon. Here's the main road. And it's continuing up the canyon, weaving around. And it may be circling around to that high point we saw a bit ago. We don't know. All I can say is we are at approximately 50... 500 feet and our goal is 6,700 feet. So um, yeah, yeah, we've got 1,200 feet left, but we're making good time. Nice road. Okay, the road is turning evil. If you've got a two-wheel drive, little spots like this are beginning to appear. And wow, you need a strong motor to work your way up here and and maybe even high centered um, car or vehicle. So yeah, yeah, we're starting to turn into four wheel drive at this point. So, yep, leave your two wheel drives below. There's actually no place to park beyond the Eureka Mine. So if you have a two wheel drive, you might seriously consider um, leaving your car at the Eureka Mine and heading up on foot. But on the other hand, who knows? Maybe you got great tires and you got a powerful motor and you're not too low centered. You could probably make it, but don't quote me on that. Well, I don't know um, if this were quartz or had quartz in it and you see all the the white rock on this hill and then there's some uh, slightly reddish rock iron uh, so we've got the combination potentially of quartz and iron and that's the sign that there could be gold however these days with satellite imagery about every place that has gold has probably been mapped out by satellite. So um, the fact that there's not a mine here may indicate that nope, <laughs> no gold. But we're continuing on up. And the question is, are we gonna wind around and head to that super high point? We do have a thousand feet to go. That could be a thousand. I'm not sure how to gauge that. Or maybe that hill up ahead. Although that looks more like 500 feet from here. So who knows? Um, hard to gauge elevation. Anyway, let's continue on up. Moving up Augerberry Point Road. And you can see the hills in the distance there are on the other side of, opposite side of Immigrant Pass and Immigrant Pass Road. And here is that point that I was thinking, oh, don't let this be Augerberry Point because it looks like it's another couple thousand feet higher than where we are now. And um, actually the road is continuing off in this direction. You see it's winding around to the left, so I wonder if it's gonna to wind to the opposite side of this high point. And potentially this is the area where Augerberry Point is. We don't know. All I know is that there's about um, 900 feet elevation gain still to go. So let's continue on. Who knows, but look how the road's going. 
and then it takes a left and it heads up to that point up there. That could be Augerberry Point or a false summit. We certainly see a lot of those. Okay, and then 360 degree. And that high area that we were looking at earlier, um, that's toward um, Wild Rose Peak, actually. So I don't know. We'll have to, when we get up to Augerberry Point, maybe we'll be able to see Wild Rose Peak from there. But this is my best guess. Augerberry Point is right up there. So let's just see. Here we go. Continuing up to that rocky point up there. It seems the road does indeed go there. Now, look at this though. Now we're seeing Death Valley open up beneath us. And even in the far distance there, Mount Charleston Wilderness, that high point, very faint. And looking down the valley, and Dante's view would be right about there. And then there's the path that we took to Mount Perry, which should be in this area right here. We don't know for certain, but I'm guessing that Mount Perry is in that, is that high point. And then circling around, I am not seeing, oh, look at this road. Looks like the double tracks of a vehicle straight ahead. And I would think that that might be from the original miners. Then of course, this area here is a wide spot, which I think is where people park and then walk up to the top because I hear that road up to the top is pretty gnarly. Okay, onward we go. And there's a car up ahead taking that gnarly road. We'll see if they make it all the way to Augerberry Point. It looks like this road's been graded very recently, so maybe it's not so gnarly up to the top anymore. We'll find out. A quick check in on the road quality. This is that gnarly section. It was described as a pretty gnarly section, but they've just graded it. And except for the incline, which requires a, a good engine and great tires. It looks to me like no high center is required and you can make it up to the top pretty easily. And then looking back down the road and we'll do a 360 when we get to the summit. We'll, uh, which is I think is right around the corner. And then we'll look at all the landmarks around us. Here's the parking area. And notice this little trail leading off in this direction. That's the last stretch. Good, um, well recommended trail so we'll take that in a moment. So let's go ahead and take this little trail that heads off from the parking area and yeah I'm heard it's I've heard it's well worth it. So here we go up the trail. Here we are at one high point and we'll do a 360 here. And 
And I just wonder if this is Trail Canyon down below us. Not sure, but yeah, looks like one could ascend to, yeah, this is a cliff. Um, one could ascend to this point from that canyon and just come right up that avalanche slope. So that means that this is a potential route from the valley floor up to this point, except you'd have to get across the valley. <laughs> so being that there are uh, precious few roads, one road, the west side road, the potential problem would be, yeah, you've got to go 20 miles on foot in order to get to Trail Canyon. So yeah, well, if this is Trail Canyon even, but if you got here, you'd be able to come up to this point and ultimately, let's see what we see ahead here. There is Wild Rose Peak. And then over behind it is Rogers Peak. And you can faintly see the communication towers on Rogers Peak. If you go to the Telescope Peak page of LasVegasAreaTrails.com, you see the the trip we made up to Rogers Peak and then on to Telescope Peak. And then also you can see a page on Wild Rose Peak. Um, the area that we thought might be Augerberry Point is way down there. It's still higher than we are right now, but no, that is not our Augerberry Point and it's not even the height of Wild Rose Peak. So. Uh, there's Wild Rose Peak. Okay, and then let's look um, below us. Maybe this is Trail Canyon. It is definitely a canyon. <laughs> and it looks like it empties right out into the, into the floor of Death Valley. And then over there would be the high point just beyond Dante's view. And you go past that high point and down the other side, you're going to be on Dante's view. And then over here, the highest point should be Mount Perry. And there is a page Dante's view to Mount Perry on LasVegasAreaTrails.com. And looking out in this direction, you can faintly, very faintly see um, Mount Charles, Mount Charleston Wilderness, that high point, very faint high point in the background. So let's go around this corner. It looks like this goes, this little trail goes to a um, lookout point and we'll see more points of interest from that point. Um, however, what we won't see is off in this direction. Uh, that could be, I see snow, whoops, sorry. I see snow-capped mountains very faintly. And um, I'm wondering if that's the Mount Whit Whitney area. That would be approximately the direction that Mount Whitney is in. So, could be. Okay, and then looking down into the flats down here. If you look very carefully, you can pick out the road we came up. The Augerberry Point Road winding down through that canyon. And we're going to take that on the way down. I'm estimating that it might just take about an hour to get all the way down to Immigrant Pass Road. Um, I'll, I'll be running it. So we'll see. It is downhill, but you know, who knows what kind of condition I will be in once I take a few steps. <laughs> That's never a given. Okay. So yeah, here we are at a high point. Let's go down to the next point, which I think has a better view to the east side of Death Valley. And again, we are on the pan in the Panamint Range on the west side of Death Valley. 
uh, Dante's views on the east side, Mount Perry's on the east side, as is Furnace Creek. We're going to see Furnace Creek Ranch and the inn uh, very shortly. So, and then there's a river that goes through Death Valley. We're going we're gonna to look at that too. Um, so anyway, onward. I'm liking this view up here. Right down below is a point a little further out. But as I look at this, I'm not thinking that that point's going to have a better view than where we are right now. It's kind of cool being in these rocks. Um, so let's take a look at right down in this area. This is the Mesquite Grove in the Furnace Creek area. And then we go this direction and you're looking right down at Furnace Creek Ranch. You go up the hill a little ways and uh, come on. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, right about in the center there is the inn at Death Valley. Okay. And that would make Zabritsky Point. Yeah. Zabritsky Point and Manly Beacon right in that area. Golden Canyon. And you see the, the kind of the golden rock right in the center there. That would be Golden Canyon. So um, we will do a trip from Golden Canyon up to Zabriskie Point. But if you look very carefully, you can actually see Manly Beacon, which is the signature peak of Death Valley. And then looking in this direction, there in the center of the valley, if you look carefully, you can see a river. Yes, there's some blue down there, which is the river that goes through Death Valley. Who would know that there's a river there? Uh, probably a little creek, but I bet underground there's a lot more. Um, and I bet it's pretty salty. Okay, and um, oh, I've pointed out just about every high point and point of interest that can be seen from here. So, um, yeah, Augerberry Point, where we are. And um, just at the Almost at the very edge. We'll go down there to the edge, but, you know, it's not better than this. Okay. Another little area of note is you see that reddish hill there. Uh, it's kind of a long ridge. That is the ridge that around the other side is the town of Skidoo. And you can see the Skidoo page on Las Vegas area trails where we um, took that road up to Skidoo. Um, and the turnoff for Skidoo is on Immigrant Pass Road before the turnoff to Augerberry Point and Eureka Mine. Now we're on that point that I was um, showing below the high point where we stood just a moment ago. And now you're looking north in Death Valley. Then there's the river right in the center. And now in the center is um, Furnace Creek. And just a um, little above and to the right is the Inn at Death Valley. Right in the center there is, you know, let's, let's zoom in on these. Um, right in the center there is um, Golden Canyon, Manly Beacon. You can see that whole thing, Zabriskie Point. And then going this direction, Mesquite, um, Grove, the Inn, 
at Death Valley and Furnace Creek Ranch. Okay. And I guess we'll zoom in on the river too. There's the little river at the base of Death Valley. Okay. And then circling around here. Now you're looking south. And there you see Dante's view. And to the left, that high point would be Mount Perry. And then continuing around, of course, directly beneath us, another shot of Trail Canyon. I think it's Trail Canyon. Not exactly sure. It seems like it should be, but we don't know. Okay. And then up this ridge. And this is actually the um, that ridge that you're looking at right in the center. That's the ridge from uh, on the high side of Hanapah Canyon. And um, that ridge I've taken all the way up to um, to Mahogany Camp um, Mahogany um, Campground and over to Rogers Peak and then over to Telescope Peak and I don't think you can see Telescope Peak from here but you can see Rogers Peak pretty clearly well it's kind of faded um, here is Wild Rose Peak Here's that high point I was standing on just a moment ago, looking down on this overlook. And then over around the hills that you see down there or on the other side of Immigrant Pass, um, Immigrant Canyon, Immigrant Pass Road, where we started and then completing the 360 more canyons below and who knows maybe this is trail canyon but definitely another canyon and wow this would definitely be a way to this point actually where we're standing um you could just take this canyon right from the the base of the valley there and um, come all the way up almost directly across from Furnace Creek Ranch. So if you want to hike across the valley and head up a canyon, head up to the west side, that would be your path. But I think it would be something like 25 miles one way. So um, you might want to weigh home, have somebody pick you up up here. Okay, so there you have it. Death Valley from Augerberry Point. Augerberry Point. This is the parking area. And there's a little trail over here that takes you out to a further point. And it's, it's really pretty awesome. So I would do that. And you can climb up um, from that trail, climb up on top of these rocks and you get just incredible views from up there. Plus, if you like to have pictures with rocks in the foreground and, and a huge view in the background, um, yeah, you can even frame pictures between rocks. And um, here is the elevation, 6,433 feet. That was a surprise. I was looking at 6,700 and so um, we actually got here um, about 300 feet before I thought I would get here, which is really nice. Little interpretive sign, and I'll go ahead and read that. Here at Augerberry Point, you can see why Death Valley is often described as a vast 
Geologic Museum. Badwater Basin far below and the peaks of the Panamint Mountains above are the results of the land tilting along active fault lines. The valley floor drops and the mountains rise. The steep slant of the rock layers exposed in the canyon below is evidence of this massive movement. Augerberry Point offers one of the most expansive vistas on the western side of Death Valley. Visible from here are Mount Charleston, right over there, that high point, very faint. 11,900 feet high, 80 miles to the east in Nevada. The green oasis of Furnace Creek, and I've got that in other videos, and the white salt flats of Badwater Basin, which right down there. Follow the trail on the north side of the ridge to reach the most spectacular view. And we were just there. So um, there you go. Augerberry Point is named for Pete Augerberry, a prospector who worked this section of the Panamints until his death in 1945. Augerberry repeatedly, uh, reputedly built the first access road to the point just so he could share his favorite view with others. He called it the big view. And yeah, it certainly is. So there you have it, Augerberry Point. And now we're gonna hightail it back. Um, we'll see, I, I'm thinking an hour to an hour and a half going back down the road at a run because <laughs> it's downhill all the way, which is really nice. And, and then back to Las Vegas. So off we go. But goodbye, Augerberry Point. What an incredible view. Okay, down we go. When you're heading up Augerberry Point Road, if you want to go to the Eureka Mine, take the right here, it'll circle around lead up to that rocky hill. The mine is in that rocky hill. And when you get up to the top of that rocky hill, you can look down and see Pete Augerberry's cabin. And you can actually go into the cabin, as I showed a little earlier, just by coming down a different way. Now, if you drove up, then <laughs> you, you probably want to just circle around the base of that rocky hill on the way back and go to a spot right over there between those two hills is where Pete Augerberry's cabin is at the base of that junction of the two hills and a saddle between the two hills and you could then come back to the road here and um, catch your car and, and continue. But just to let you know, this fork in the road is not marked at all. You just have to know that you take the right if you're going to Eureka uh, Mine and, and the Cashier Mill. The left, if you're heading up to Augerberry Point. Here we are back at the beast. After traveling on foot to Eureka and the cashier Eureka Mind and um, Pete Augerberry Cabin, cashier um, mill, and all the way up to Augerberry Point. It's been a great day. And here's a look around.
that's toward the um, Telescope Peak and Wild Rose Peak. And then here's the opposite side of Immigrant Canyon. The west side. And then this is back toward Highway 190 and um, out, back out to um, Las Vegas. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 